record maybe. There we go. Welcome everybody. This is Michael. I hope you hear me well. I'm calling you from Paris and France, far away from the United States. Good morning everybody to the United States. Good evening in Hong Kong. And um, I'm glad to open, to welcome everybody to the second media club. And today's uh, presenter is going to be Kelsey. She's going to take the, the lead in a second. And she offered to speak about the book uh, Reclaiming Conversation, The Power of Talk in a Digital Age by Sherry Turkle. And I think I'm going to give her right away the floor. And before doing this, maybe please everybody watch out for the microphone to mute it while you're not talking. Otherwise, you're all going to go like, like Darth Vader, and you try to avoid that. So, Sam, she's going to be in the background. She's going to handle the breakout sessions, but also technical issues. And I'm also going to mute people if you forget to turn off your mic. So sorry, but that's going to be. Make sure you unmute yourself if you do want to talk. But here we go. So Kelsey, the floor is yours. And thank you very much for taking the lead. All right. Well, thank you, everyone who's able to join this morning or whichever time it is in your part of the world. Um, so yeah, I want to just briefly before we move on, make sure if everyone is able to get into the Google Doc. Um, if you're unable to, please use the chat function in Zoom uh, to message people and, you know, Sam will help with making sure everyone's on the same page and able to follow along as we move forward. Um, within that Google Doc, I've kind of laid out some key pieces of information and going to be using that to structure the conversation today. Um, and I just wanted to start, you know, obviously to make sure we're all on the same page, as Michael said, that we're going to be discussing the book by Sherry Turkle, Reclaiming the Conversation, The Power of Talk in a Digital Age. Um, you know, hopefully those of you who are joining have had a chance to read it, but if not, you know, please don't run away. We will be able to discuss these topics at large, um, even if you didn't have a chance to dive into the book. And um, I, in the document, kind of laid out a rough itinerary for today. So, you know, of course, right now, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the book and um, the main components involved with this session. And then we're going to do brief introductions, um, dive into a conversation, um, and then kind of also, of course, do a little bit of critique of our work, um, explore what others have had criticisms of around the book, um, and then end with, of course, action steps, um, our next steps that we want to take. Um, before diving into specifics about the book, I wanted to also just acknowledge, you know, that this media club and this session is being hosted by the Media Education Lab out of the University of Rhode Island. Um, we have Yanti uh, Friesom, who's in part right now, and he is the executive director, is that right? Associate director um, of the lab and really appreciative of all the amazing events they do. And then also, you know, Michael spoke briefly and then Samantha Stanley is also on providing tremendous tech support. Um, <laughs> to shout out to all of those people who are making this possible. Um, and I just want to take a moment to also acknowledge, so today is the start of Media Literacy Week. And right off the bat here in the United States, because it's the morning, um, so I've provided a link to that within the document. And I hope um, everyone here will be able to take part in some more Media Literacy Week events moving forward uh, throughout this week. Um, there's been kind of some hashtags, relevant handles for Twitter included in all that top information. So if you like to take part in the Twitter sphere and all those conversations, feel free to incorporate those pieces um, throughout the session or following it uh, to keep the dialogue going. Briefly, a little bit about myself. Um, I'm here in Ithaca, New York, at Ithaca College, and I'm looking out the window right now. It's so cold and dreary, and I'm very jealous of anyone who's in a sunny, warm location right now. Um, and I have just recently joined Project Look Sharp that's been around for over 20 years doing media literacy education uh, curriculum and professional development. 
and I've incor incorporated a little bit about um, you know them with a link to their website and Twitter handle. So I'm happy I, I'd be happy to continue to discuss their work following this as well. Um, so now shifting gears um, again, I just want to say you know you have the overview of what we're going to be doing. And let's just dive into some introductions before we get into the discussion. Um, and I'll kind of touch base about give a brief summary of the book before we dive into that discussion. But it's looking like we have a decent, like not too many people on. So um, Sam, we'll do a we'll let kind of everyone take a turn going around and saying a brief thing about themselves. If you're in the Google Doc um, at the top, you know, if you click introductions, it's going to link to that part of the document. And if everyone can, you know, also, you know, just within this chat feature, you can make sure to say, you know, kind of answer these prompts and then we can go around and briefly say it. Um, just kind of your name, where you currently are, your position, and then a way to engage with this topic itself is like one word that kind of describes an emotion you have right now about talk in a digital age. So I might say, you know, I'm feeling a little anxious about talk in a digital age this morning. Um, so yeah, I think if you wanna kind of type a little bit in the chat um, and then we'll take turns briefly going around and letting everyone kind of introduce themselves. Sam, do you wanna do that with the, they can un unmute or do you want them, are they able to unmute? I have a question. Yep. Hi there. Um, we are typing in a Google Doc when you, is that? Oh, no, you could just type in the chat here in Zoom. Um, oh, I haven't seen that. Okay, thank there. you. Let me just yeah. check that out. Yeah, I see some people have already done it. So we have Sahana Sarkar. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing anything. Um, in India and Davina. If anyone wants to unmute briefly and just say the introduction, feel free, or if Sam or Michael, you want to start. <laughs> okay, I'll say something, I guess. Oh, so Davina, just your name, just your name, like brief kind of location where you are, and then like your one feeling of how you're feeling about this like emotion. Okay, I'll go and then I'll hand it off okay, to you. Yeah, how about we do that? We'll do a popcorn style. So I'll popcorn. All right, cool. There we go. All right, well, um, uh, I'm still here in Hong Kong. <laughs> I'm a PhD student at the University of Hong Kong, and uh, it is 10 o'clock at night here, so that is why I look wrinkly and tired. Um, uh, so the, the word that comes to mind for me is um, appreciation, actually. Um, I think that's probably a controversial word given the uh, topic and tone of this book, but um, my family lives in the US and I'm here in Hong Kong, so I very much appreciate um, digital uh, communication. So Davina, it's all you. Hello everybody, I'm uh, Davina. Can you hear me correctly? Is that, am I loud enough? Yep. Okay, that's good. So I'm a PhD student at the Department of Communication at the University of Hyderabad. It is um, 7.40 in the evening here, and we've just started celebrating the festival of Diwali in the country. So happy Diwali. <laughs> and um, one word for me about talking in digital age would be conflicted. Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave it, leave it at that. <laughs> Can you popcorn one other person then? So you see or no? Um, how about, um, I don't know, Pam, Pam Steger? Is she online? Because I see her in chat. I just saw her in chat. Can you hear okay. me? My, oh, yes. yes. Okay. All right, yes. here I go. Um, hi, I'm Pam Steger. I live in Providence, Rhode Island. I'm a senior researcher and writer for the Media Education Lab. And um, I guess my one word would be hopeful, but that may be because I'm from an older generation and we still believe in conversation and have a lot of them. So, <laughs> um, but I have four grandkids from um, 12 to 20, almost 22, and they keep me uh, definitely up to date on everything digital as well as Renee Hobbs pulling me into the 21st century every chance she can get. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I, 
I, I'm glad Sherry wrote this book. I think it's a, it's a uh, question and topic that needs to be discussed. Thank you. And can and, you po can you popcorn to one other person? And um, yeah, and everyone moving forward, it's so good to get to know you at, for the sake of time too. It's great bit to uh, one word about emotion and then we're oh, going to oh, into a further conversation and you can discuss you know, what you've been doing with Renee and in Rhode Island, we'll get further into that. Okay, I, I, I thought I said my word was hopeful. Yes, uh, definitely. Not. Yeah, okay, and I'm gonna um, pass it off to Jane. I, I click, hi, this is Jane Regan. Can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I'm in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and I uh, right now teach at BU, but I've used, um, uh, writings and text from and, and the TED talk uh, based on this book and in classes at Salem State and I am a gigantic fan so that's way more than one word. One word is uh, not I'm not going to be unhopeful one word would be nervous. Okay, here we go. Any popcorn to someone else? That How about Samantha did you speak yet? Samantha Sorry, yes, I did. Yes, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I was saying there was another Samantha. Um, do you want to repop for someone else? Then? Uh, I'll pop to April then. Okay. Hi there. Um, one word. Uh, overwhelmed. Yeah, I, I work with adolescents all day long. I research the intersection between uh, digital literacy and art. Uh, and um, I see so many positives and I, I, that can come from this and I daily experience many of the negatives. So I have, I have very mixed feelings. Mm -hmm. And do you want a popcorn to someone else who hasn't been uh, I think up top I, I, I've seen up top um Olivo who's, who's it okay who else hasn't introduced themselves um I'll go ahead if, okay. okay can you hear me okay yep yep this is Ralph Olivo I teach at the University of Oklahoma and uh the, the main reaction I have to this book is ambivalent because there are, I think, some real strengths to what she's doing and also some real skepticism at the same time about, uh, mostly because every time it seems like we go through any kind of communication change in culture, there's a wave of paranoia that follows it and then it all gets shooken out later. So mm -hmm. I'll just leave it at that for now. Um, and let's hear from, let's see, uh, Sahana. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm Shahana from, I'm an assistant professor in St. Joseph's College, Bangalore, India. Um, so my, uh, it's a, again, I mean, I think everyone has, uh, all of you said everything. Uh, I also have a very um, a mixed opinion about it because I feel um, the moment you are, uh, entering a territory which is still sort of new in India and also there's a, there, there's a, there's a system of class in play in uh, India. So there's, there's this skepticism involved in it uh, in terms of um, how to deal with it. So I would probably introduce the word responsibility and sensitization when I'm talking about digital space. So yeah, I'd like to put that word and notion and uh, perspective while we are discussing about it further. Oh, and is there anyone else? Um, um, is Jeremy? I, I see Jeremy. I think he's. Did, did, did he speak already? I see him online, but I'm not sure. Okay, no. There you go. Hi, everybody. Um, hi there. This is Jeremy. Um, I am currently here at Ithaca College as well. I work as an instructional technology generalist here. So I deal with a lot of technology and what we do at the college uh, going forward. Um, I also participated a lot in the community doing media outreach and media literacy. So I've worked at elementary schools as well as middle schools, high schools, as, as well as some uh, assisted living homes, talking about what, what it means to use this technology and where are we going with it. Um, for me, when I look at, uh, at, this, at the, the topic of conversation, I see that it's, it's underappreciated and undervalued. 
but um, my hope is that by having conversations about it, we'll we'll move forward and and have a have a positive outlook going forward. Um, is let's see, Gianna, Gina or Gina? Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi. Okay. Uh, Gina Marcello. I'm an assistant professor of digital communication at Georgiaport University, and we're located in New Jersey. And I have a lot of feelings about the book. Um, I've used Sherry Triple's work uh, in class. And uh, on the one hand, I, I'm very concerned. And on the other hand, I think there is a big responsibility that we have going forward, how we're going to encourage the talk around conversation and the importance and value of it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I guess who, who has not gone? Did Davina? Davina, are you there? Davina? Let's see her. Um, Yanti, I know you haven't. We heard from uh, Davina. Is it already already? gone? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. You there, Davina? Hey, everybody. Oh, so, um, so, so I'm. Over to my oh. Davina's kind of there. Are you trying to talk, Davina? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, since I've already gone, I was hoping Michael would go next. Oh, okay. We'll let Michael go and then Yanti. Okay. So that's, uh, so I'm Michael, Michael Stopel. I work at the American University of Paris. I teach information literacy. And while reading actually Shelley Turkle's book, I somehow was getting paranoid because I didn't want to look at my phone anymore. And I was bothering everybody like to talk. <laughs> so, so that was like one kind of experience. And the other word that always was coming back to me was empathy, what we understand, uh, what's our definition of empathy? Uh, was that different in the past? How do we know? So there were like a couple of questions coming up uh, while I was reading actually. And I'm looking forward actually to, to have the discussion today. So Yanti, it's you. Hey, so I also use um, Turco um, piece in my communication classes. I'm teaching at Columbia College Chicago and I'm also the Associate Director of the Media Education Lab. Um, I'm always surprised at how my students react to the text because surprisingly for me, it's suddenly for them outdated. So it's 2011 and it's already outdated and they're like criticizing, but it's not like relevant for things that are happening now. So it's very surprising since I'm so much empathizing with what she's writing and agree with most of her work. Um, always the reaction of my students, millennials, um, is surprising. So looking forward to the conversation about it. Um, Ashley. Ashley? Okay, I want to pick someone else. We'll just okay. keep um, the Saru Can you hear me? Oh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. Uh, I just realized I had to tap somewhere. Uh, I'm speaking to you from a mobile phone. Um, sorry, I'm late. Uh, I tried to write on the chat, chat pane as well. Um, busy with the kids uh, back from school. Um, happy to be with you discussing Turkle's work. Um, I used some of her earlier work actually, but um, when empathy is the case, I'm always in for discussing uh, with colleagues in similar fields. Um, I'm right now connecting with you from Siegen, Germany, where I'm a research fellow at the University of Siegen. Oh. Thanks. Okay, is there anyone else that hasn't um, introduced themselves that wants to at this time? Because I didn't want to move forward if not. Okay, and again, it's great to see everyone introduce themselves in the chat. And as we're navigating this space, right, where we're trying to find the good blend between uh, using our voices for conversation and talk and a digital interface, um, get meta for a second. <laughs> Think about this experience in relation to what we were reading and what we're gonna be talking about. Uh, and I know it can be challenging at times and have its uh, strengths and weaknesses. So I do appreciate, um, you know, I'm hoping we're able to use the chat um, or use comments in the Google Doc as we go for you to kind of share your thoughts um, or further share more about yourselves. 
and please continue to kind of like read what people are sharing in those written forms in addition to what people are saying um, because I do know you know with the amount of people on here it can be a little bit challenging at times to have everyone's voice heard um, so I just want to everyone you know be on the same page again if we're referencing back to the document um, the Google Doc Briefly, just want to touch base, you know, and it sounds like many of you who are joining are familiar with Sherry Turkle. Um, just included a little bit towards the top of the document, you know, that she's a professor, author, consultant, or researcher who has spent the last 30 years researching psychology of people's relationships with technology um, and, you know, has held a position at MIT. And this book, I think what's interesting and a thing to note, um, you know, is that it's coming off of a previous book that she wrote, Alone Together. Um, and if any of you have read that or are familiar with that work, please feel free to, you know, incorporate your, uh, your thoughts on that into this conversation as well. But in that book, you know, she kept hearing people say, I'd rather text than talk. And then, you know, following up from that, she kind of dove into then an ethnographic study and this book um, in which she's exploring the impacts of digital devices on our in-person communication and relationships. So um, if you go to the discussion section of the Google Doc, what we're going to do here briefly is we're going to break we're break out into breakout groups. Um, hopefully of just three to four people max. Um, and we're going to explore, kind of give you a chance to further discuss what impacts, um, you know, what impacts the digital devices are having on us um, and really what's most relevant and concerning to you. And I think, you know, Michael brought this up that it is really interesting to explore this from a cultural angle since we have people joining us from around the world today too. Um, and I, I included in this document, and you'll see, you know, below those framing questions for the discussion, I have included the table of contents, a little bit about, you know, how she's using um, Thoreau's book, Walden, and his three chairs. Um, you know, I've included kind of some of that information and the main points she's making um, in this section. So you can take a moment to kind of glance through that and use that as a starting point for your conversation too. If there's a specific bullet that's listed here and like, oh yes, that's definitely what I really want to discuss. Um, feel free to utilize that. And like I said, um, feel free to kind of add comments in to any of these bullets with your way in on it uh, to inform the conversation or if you're feeling like you're not necessarily getting that chance to talk like you're hoping, um, add, add your say that way. Uh, so I'm going to turn it over to Sam to break into um, these breakout sessions. So you should get a pop-up, right, Sam, that's inviting yeah. them to the breakout session. Yeah, so we're going to do um, groups of three. That works out nicely to have six groups. So um, I'm just going to assign everybody at random. And um, in about, so the discussion is meant to be about 15 minutes. So I'll give you guys a heads up when there's five minutes left. And then at one minute left, I'll give you like the signal to come back um, to the main group. Um, and that's all done by clicks that are hopefully self-explanatory. Uh, yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go for it. Good, thanks. Oh, and you do have to, I think, accept your way into the meeting, right? Was that how it worked, Kelsey? Yeah, I think there'll be a pop-up that comes up and saying like they're inviting you to this breakout. So then say, yes, join the breakout. And I think also just checking in on time right now, we're at almost the half hour. So let's shift this a little bit closer to 10 minutes. So then we can um, have transition time to come back and address some of the other things as well. Okay, so I'll give you um, a heads up at seven minutes. Sounds good. Uh, does everyone see their invite yet or no? No. Oh, yep, now I do. Yes. Good. Great.
Okay, so it's only us in the main session? Interesting. Lucky us. <laughs> I'm sure people will be trickling in soon. Uh, I guess you need to like... Uh, um, Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Did I became the host again? Oh, that's interesting. That is just, yeah, your co-host. Huh. Is going on. So she's closing the rooms. Ah, she didn't close the rooms yet. Okay. So yeah. we're the only one who kind of like uh, went back. Okay. <laughs> A little premature. Oh well. <laughs> well, we'll have everybody joining us. So, Super. yeah, it's the first time my Zoom is using that, so it's uh, great. Uh, it's are. working. Hello, oh, oh, there we are. Cut oh, off. Some, yeah, something <laughs> happened. I don't know what happened. Digital dictator. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so laying down the law. Right. Okay, I gave everybody a lot of warnings. Yeah. Who's, who's, the <laughs> <laughs> who's the dictator? Who's the dictator? Digital dictator. So hopefully someone wasn't too harshly cut off. Uh, we appreciate. I think. I mean, from my experience with the group I was in, we had some great conversation and started getting into cultural differences. Um, you know, personal experiences. So hopefully everyone else had some of that same experience. Um, you know, actually, and I'm thinking, Sam, it's random assignment, right? When I go back into the groups. Okay, so it's 940 now. I say we do for the next 10 minutes getting into our critiques of her work. Let's do like a random assignment of groups that same thing again. Because um, I just really think that gives people the chance to um, it gives people the chance to really dive in a deeper conversation than let two or three people talk and most people are silent. Um, is there anyone, let's see. Yeah, let's, let's do that. And then we'll use the last 10 minutes to kind of talk across the whole group. And, um, and then as part of that, we can kind of discuss next steps, but do a larger sharing out at the end. Okay, so I'm going to, um, I guess when I close the sessions, it gives you a one minute warning. So yeah. I'm just going to go ahead and do that um, at 10.49. Yes, or 9.49. Oh, or whatever 49 whatever it is, is. It yeah, is okay. for you guys. <laughs> yeah, the 49. Okay. Okay, cool. So we'll go back into uh, groups of three. Just give me one moment. Yep. And while she's doing that again, so this is in the Google Doc, the critiques. There's a section there. So you can draw off of those quotes to talk to. Um, and it's really saying kind of what's missing or what's represented, do you believe? All right, we join the breakouts again.
Okay. Jeez. There we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was the fastest <laughs> 59 seconds in my life. <laughs> uh, April, I missed you. April, cut you off. To be continued. <laughs> to be continued, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like time traveling, like, whoa, we're here. <laughs> I, have to, I have to leave. Can I say one thing really quickly? Yes, yes. So in my chat room was my friend from Ivory Coast, who's probably listening somewhere. And, and it's funny, we, so he's in the Ivory Coast and I'm in Cambridge, Mass. And we sort of, our criticism was not uh, dissimilar. Both of us were saying that the technology can't be blamed for everything. And uh, he was stressing that, and he'll say this himself too, that the technology creates huge opportunities for people, especially in countries like Ivory Coast. Yeah. Um, and that we just have to, we just have to not let it overcome us. And what I was saying was not dissimilar, which was that I feel like a lot of the social um, habits, um, which are really ought to be blamed on rampant runaway capitalism and what's happening in and around us get blamed on the piece of machinery. And I think that we shouldn't conflate them and be sort of technological reductionist. I still love Turkle. Yeah. But um, so I don't know where he is and I forget his name, but he'll probably chime in. But I have to run to a meeting at 10. Thank you. And this was Thank awesome. You. Bye, Jay. Great. Thanks. Bye. I'll be in yeah. Providence on Saturday if anyone's Yay. coming. Yay. I'll be there. Okay. Thank <laughs> you so much for allowing me to come by. Yeah. Thank you. And so it's transitioning to that. Yes, we have a mere nine minutes left. Um, hopefully, these breakout sessions have been helpful in being able to dive in deeper a bit. Um, but let's see, let's save at least two minutes. Um, so we're all ending in that just randomly cut off um, uh, at the end of this whole thing. Um, but I guess I wanna really open it a little bit more to talk across um, those smaller conversations we've had. If there were some like big takeaways um, or kind of like big actions or like advocacy um, points that you want to make at this time. And so I'm going to really open it up, but I really want everyone to be conscious if you can make it kind of as concise um, as possible with the respect for a few people being able to share out. So does anyone want to say kind of a, yeah, Davina, that's nice to <laughs> use the chat. Well, I'm just going to get a ball rolling quickly. So I um, really believe that we should um, give a lot of importance to um, people's narratives coming out um, instead of trying and, um, you know, sitting on our high chairs and categorizing um, and kind of, you know, boxing everything neatly. I guess it's all right if um, people's experiences are messy. I think messy is good. And um, it's important for their voices to be heard. Um, especially for me because I'm working on young people in social media and I think um, I really need their practices and their experiences to come out um, as much as possible and over to whoever wants to go next. Oh, thank you. No, that's important. The importance of different narratives and listening. I'll just say that I think um, that my takeaway was uh, that um, we should look to our own use first uh, and check ourselves at the door. Um, because, you know, a lot of what she's talking about um, is for adults as well as students and mm -hmm. that we need to practice, um, you know, what we preach. Oh, yeah, that's a great concise summary. Yeah, that was a lot of what uh, Ralph and Yonti and I were speaking about was, you know, who's actually responsible, who are, who are kind of the role models that, that we can kind of follow with this new technology and, and moving forward. Um, we spoke a lot about you know, when, when new technology shows up, there's, there's all these, you know, who, who actually is responsible for, for your, your use of that technology and, and, and who, who, should, who should mitigate and, and control that. Yeah. Anyone else? Uh, there was something that uh, Jane said I thought was really kind of important about thinking about how the economic system informs this because we're, we're in a media environment where we're constantly in the process of evaluating and rating things on value scales and economic scales and things like that as if that's what's really important about it. Um, and usually I go through this thing of trying to tell students to 
uh, trying to get students to start thinking about suspending judgment about liking or not liking things or whether things are good or not. And if you can just postpone that, then you can actually interact with it in a different way. Um, but of course, that always comes in and takes over. But it, you know, that again, it kind of reinscribes the economics of it. So yeah, go beyond a dualistic framing of it and response. And and I think yeah, thanks for bringing up Jane again. I think what the point she brought up is you know the kind of threefold that it's like really important for us. And I think. Um, you know, Turkle does very much so focus on the individual and like what we can do as individuals to reclaim our own power over the devices. Um, like a critique I've heard of her work, though, is like you said, so they the economical or larger capitalistic societal structures at play, um, you know, that we kind of embody even beyond our relation to devices and all of our relations and actions in, in the world, but then also um, I think something that hasn't been brought up, I wanted to briefly say, is, you know, the design of the devices themselves and the interfaces. Um, and I think there's more, more insight coming into light about all that's going into um, interface and the, the algorithms. And um, I think, but that ties to what you were saying of, um, it's just important to realize, like, what are the larger economic or like what indicators are being used to inform how those are being designed um, very capitalistic driven at this point um, and maybe are there ways that those could be redesigned with different kind of goals or purposes in mind um, else? it's uh you know from today's session, as someone that was unfamiliar with this work, but just feels so much more enlightened of the different avenues that we can take um, our next steps to consider through the educational lens, that social emotional lens, you know, what what role does empathy play in all this, as well as one's responsibility uh, to humankind. And now just even hearing a couple of people speak to that economic lens. Uh, as an educator, we sometimes hear about the digital gap of, between the has and have not. So where and how does the economic pieces, the complexity of that, make this a much more uh, a constructive struggle? I think there is a balance of um, where and how this work can move forward, for, for, especially for educators. Definitely. Thank you for bringing it back to education. And um, I think most of us are related to the education field. So with that, I know, you know, it's getting towards the top of the hour, but if anyone has kind of, yeah, like action steps or like how this applies to their instruction or research or, you know, it's kind of like spurs what they're doing kind of from here on out. Um, if, uh, if one person at least like wants to speak on behalf of that. No. Yanti, I know you do empathy and education research. I, I definitely am going to be <laughs> posing these questions to my students because I think it's it's worth uh, uh, placing that question before the generations and and getting different responses is what my um, my guess will be. Right. But I definitely want to get more input from my students about this. Yeah, it's so great to get to, to, like just this experience right now, those diverse, um, you know, diverse perspectives on this and the different generational views. Um, and I'm, I'm going right now to the document. Um, I'm changing the sharing settings, hopefully, so that you can edit it. Um, because I just want, it's tying to your point that you just brought up, April, that I want you to be able to use this document in your own, um, you know, different instructional or professional spaces. And, um, and I want you to also contribute to it. So if you have, I think some people are sharing in the um, chat right now, like relevant resources. Um, so please feel free to. I. We shifted it from editing to commenting because someone earlier on, like, <laughs> it saw something like being deleted. So like, oh boy. But um, so if everyone's able to kind of like go in and share and add to it, rather than, of course, like take away for the benefit of everyone, um, I'd encourage that. And again, like continue on Twitter um, if you want to keep the conversation going there. Yes, at the end of this week, um, next weekend on Saturday, there's going to be 
um, the conference in Providence. Uh, hopefully, um, I see a few of you will be at, we can be gathering. And um, I'm gonna just briefly turn it back over to Sam or Michael, if you have any kind of like main summarizing points you wanna wrap up with or about the recording or follow-ups too. Uh, yeah, just some housekeeping. Um, so everybody, it looks like there's a lot of recommendations on especially like documentaries and YouTube uh, frontline stuff. Um, these are all awesome and um, please add them. I put the link in, oh yeah, yes, 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 Davina, totally. Um, please add them to our media list um, and don't forget to vote. I'm gonna put the link in here again. Um, so even if you put it into the document that Kelsey created, please also put it into our media recommendations list so that we can all vote on it. Um, I'll send out a dozen reminders like always um, to vote so that we can choose our next title. Um, Michael, do you recall off the top of your head or Yanti when our next meeting is? I think it's going to be December 10th uh, because we have something on the 3rd, so not to confuse people. So I think the morning of December 10th, it's a Monday. Um, and that's going to be the last one for this year. Um, so I'll send an invite as I do always like at the end and I'll post this video later on uh, today so other people can watch uh, the discussion um, that we had. And uh, happy Media Literacy Week to everybody. Yeah, yeah, totally. Kelsey, thank you so much for hosting. We thank really appreciate you. it. It's been fun working with you. Um, thank you, if you Kelsey. Want to be Thanks for the document too. And um, yeah, thank you very much everybody for joining, for sharing your ideas. I really appreciate it. I think it was really fantastic. And thank you very much, Kelsey, for reading today's session. And I hope to see everybody in December then, just before Christmas. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have Good a nice one. one. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.